In July of 1852, 32-year-old novelist Herman Melville visited Nantucket, Massachusetts to sit down with the man who inspired the now famous Captain Ahab from his novel Moby Dick. This man was Captain George Pollard, and his story is certainly one of the most horrific and devastating stories in nautical history. In this video, we will discuss the misfortune of Captain Pollard, whose true survival story was much darker than many people know. Just like in the novel, George Pollard captained a whaling ship called the Essex. The ship was set for a two-and-a-half-year whaling voyage, but the trip was plagued with misfortune from the start. Just two days after leaving port, the Essex was hit by a surprise storm that broke the ship's sail and nearly caused it to capsize. This is a tough break for such a young trip, and I'm sure some sailors thought this storm was a bad omen for the voyage to come. And they would be right. The next instance of bad luck occurred after the ship crawled its way to the waters off the southern tip of South America. Despite spending quite some time hunting, they found these fishing grounds nearly barren. Desperate to scavenge out a successful trip, Captain Pollard made the decision to push his boat past South America and into the Pacific. Knowing his food reserves weren't high enough to sustain the crew for their entire voyage, Pollard decided to stop at Charles Island in the Galapagos, where they carried away 6,100-pound tortoises. As a prank, one of the crew members set a fire, which, in the dry season, quickly spread. Pollard's men barely escaped, having to run through flames, and a day after they set sail, they could still see smoke from the burning island. The island never recovered from this fire, and many key species went extinct in the flames. In November 1820, the crew of the Essex was finally seeing their luck turn around, as their whaling had been bountiful in the Pacific. That would change again, while Captain Pollard was out whaling, and the first mate, Owen Chase, remained on board to oversee repairs. During his watch, Chase noticed a massive whale in the distance, estimated to be around 85 feet long. The creature appeared calm, but after a few spouts, it suddenly charged into the ship with incredible speed. The impact was so powerful that it nearly threw everyone on board off their feet. The whale passed under the ship and thrashed in the water, displaying signs of rage. The crew hurriedly attended to the hole in the ship and started the pumps, but before they could fully comprehend the situation, the whale returned, this time even faster. It rammed the ship directly under the cathead, causing water to rush in rapidly. The crew had no choice but to lower the boats and gather supplies before the Essex capsized. When Pollard saw his sinking ship from a distance, he immediately returned to it. The frantic and bewildered first mate informed him that they had been struck by a whale. Despite the ship's imminent demise, the crew hesitated to abandon it. They calculated that the nearest land was either the Marquesas Islands or the Society Islands, Pollard suggested heading towards them, but in one of the most ironic decisions in nautical history, Chase and the crew convinced him that those islands were filled with cannibals and that the crew's best chance for survival would be to sail south. The sailors left the Essex aboard their 20-foot whale boats and faced hardships almost from the start. Salt water saturated the bread and the men began to dehydrate as they ate their daily rations. Some reports state that Pollard's boat was set upon by a vengeful killer whale. After two weeks at sea, the boats finally spotted land. On Henderson Island, the sailors found no reprieve, as the island seemed to be barren of food, and all but three crew members decided to get back aboard their small boats and row away. Fortunately for the three crew members who stayed on the island, they were saved by a passing ship after four months of eating bird eggs and shellfish. By January, the poultry rations began to take their toll. On Chase's boat, one man went mad. He stood up and demanded a dinner napkin and water before falling into, quote, the most horrid and frightful convulsions before perishing the next morning. It's at this point in the video where I have to recommend that those who are faint of heart turn away 
because as first mate Chase wrote, humanity must shudder at the dreadful recital of what came next. The crew took the dead man and separated limbs from his body and cut all the flesh from the bones, after which we opened the body, took out the heart, and then closed it again, sewed it up as decently as we could, and committed it to the sea. They then roasted the man's organs on a flat stone and ate them. Over the coming weeks, three more sailors died and their bodies were cooked and eaten. One boat disappeared and then Chase's and Pollard's boats lost sight of each other. The rations of human flesh did not last long and the more the survivors ate, the hungrier they felt. On both boats the men became too weak to talk. The four men on Pollard's boat reasoned that without more food, they would die. On February 6, 1821, nine weeks after they'd bid farewell to the Essex, Charles Ramsdell, a teenager, proposed they draw lots to determine who would be eaten next. It was the custom of the sea dating back, at least in recorded instances, to the first half of the 17th century. The men in Pollard's boat accepted Ramsdale's suggestion and the lot fell to young Owen Coffin, the captain's first cousin. Pollard had promised the boy's mother he'd look out for him. My lad, my lad, the captain now shouted. If you don't like your lot, I'll shoot the first man that touches you. Pollard even offered to step in for the boy, but Coffin would have none of it. I like it as well as any other, he said. Ramsdale drew the lot that required him to shoot his friend. He paused for a long time, but when Coffin rested his head on the boat's gunwale, Ramsdale pulled the trigger. He was soon dispatched, Pollard would say, and nothing of him left. By February 18th, after 89 days at sea, the last three men on Chase's boat spotted a sail in the distance. After a frantic chase, they managed to catch the English ship, the Indian, and were rescued. 300 miles away, Pollard's boat carried only its captain and Charles Ramsdell. They had only the bones of the last crewman to perish, which they smashed on the bottom of the boat so that they could eat the marrow. As the days passed, the two men obsessed over the bones scattered on the boat's floor. Almost a week after Chase and his men had been rescued, a crewman aboard the American ship Dauphin spotted Pollard's boat. Wretched and confused, Pollard and Ramsdale did not rejoice at their rescue, but simply turned to the bottom of their boat and stuffed bones into their pockets. Safely aboard the Dauphin, the two delirious men were seen sucking the bones of their dead messmates, which they were loath to part with. The surviving five crew members returned to Nantucket, where they were welcomed home without judgment, as the nautical community understood what it took to survive at sea. Captain Pollard, however, was not as easily forgiven because he had eaten his cousin. Owen Coffin's mother could not abide being in the captain's presence. Once a year on the anniversary of the wreck of the Essex, he was said to have locked himself in his room and fasted in honor of his lost crewmen. If you enjoyed this story, we would love it if you gave it a thumbs up and subscribed. If you have any questions or know anything else you'd like to share, please leave it in the comments below. We will be actively responding to all of them. Thanks for watching and we hope you click back soon.